most people have heard of the notorious killer, known as Jack the Ripper. The mysterious murderer, guilty of five confirmed kills. But what some people don't know is that there are other Rippers, and that some have been more deadly and more terrifying. Number 1. Gao Chen Yong was married and had two children, and to unsuspecting people, he seemed like an ordinary man who owned a greengrocer with his wife. But for 14 years, Gao hid a dark secret. He committed horrific acts of violence against innocent women. He indecently assaulted, killed, mutilated, and raped 11 women. There was a strange pattern that was spotted by the authorities. For some reason, all of his victims were dressed in red. And because of the brutal and violent nature of his crimes, the media dubbed him as China's Jack the Ripper. His victims are thought to have originated in the grocery store that he managed with his wife. He would work during the daytime, and when he finished, he would follow his victims home, which is where he would strike. Gao's first murder was in May 1988, which is the time where his son was born. The victim was a 23 year old woman, and when she was discovered, she had 26 stab wounds all over her body. His other murders followed a very similar pattern, and they were often young women who lived alone. And one of the most horrific facts about Gao was that his youngest victim was only 8 years of age. Gao raped his victims sometimes while they were alive, and sometimes after stabbing them. He also even removed the reproductive organs of some of the women after killing them. And with one of his victims, he cut the hands and breasts off her. For reasons that are unclear, he stopped his killing spree in 2002. But luckily, years after, a breakthrough came. Gao's uncle was arrested for a minor crime, and he had to give a DNA sample, which the police managed to link to the crimes, determining that they must have been committed by a relative. And that's when they managed to solve the case. Gao was arrested at the grocery store where he worked on the 26th of August, 2016. He was sentenced to death on the 3rd of January, 2019, and the death sentences in China are usually carried out by lethal injection or a firing squad. Number 2. The Craigslist Ripper On the night of May the 1st, 2010, a 911 call came through, which would begin a terrifying investigation. The person on the phone stated, they're trying to kill me. That is what Shannon Gilbert told the 911 operator. Shannon Gilbert was a 24 year old woman who was working as an escort and was reported missing the day she made the call. She was last seen on the Oak Beach area after she ran from a client's house to her driver Michael Pack who was waiting outside. In December of 2010, a police officer and his dog were on a routine training exercise where they discovered the skeletal remains of a woman in a disintegrated burlap sack. The discovery led to a search and the search then led to three more bodies being discovered two days later in the same area, which made it clear that finding four bodies in the same location means they were dealing with a serial killer. All four of the victims were wrapped in burlap, and all four had used Craigslist to meet clients. Although none of them was Shannon Gilbert, her body was eventually discovered in December 2011, and the police announced that the remains of Shannon were found in a marsh, about half a mile away from where she disappeared. The police believe that Gilbert accidentally drowned after stumbling into the marsh although her family disagrees, as Gilbert was last seen banging on a resident's door and screaming for help before running off into the night. And don't forget, 
Shannon also made a 911 call, saying that she feared for her life. Many people believe that this could be a police cover-up, and that the killer could be part of the law enforcement, and I do personally find it very suspicious. In that intervening year, six more bodies were found, including a male dressed in women's clothing who was suspected to be a prostitute, and a skull that matched some severed legs that had washed up on Fire Island in New York 15 years earlier. In 1997, the torso of a woman was found in a green plastic storage container, and her body featured a fruit tattoo, which gave the woman the nickname of Peaches. As part of the Gilgo Beach investigation in 2010, part of a dismembered skeleton was found in a plastic bag. The DNA linked those remains to those of Peaches. Later, in 2011, the body of a two-year-old girl was found in Manaville. Testing later revealed that the child's mother was in fact Peaches, which means they were dealing with a truly twisted person who was capable of not only killing women, but infants too. The bodies of the mother and child had been scattered in between county lines, which seemed to indicate that whoever was killing these people was an expert and possibly a police officer, as they knew by doing this it would confuse investigators. The twisted Craigslist killer also stalked the teenage sister of one of his victims, named Melissa Bartholomew. He taunted her in six telephone calls. He even revealed to the 16-year-old that her sister Melissa was a prostitute, a secret she had kept from her family. The killer always phoned in the evenings and spoke for less than three minutes in a low voice, calmly mocking the younger sister and strangely, he would only ever speak to her. For some reason, nine years later the New York police force are fighting a judge's court order to turn over the 22 minute 911 call made by the escort, Shannon Gilbert, on the night of her disappearance, which again, I find rather suspicious. And since then, no more bodies have been found, and no arrests have been made, which means the Craigslist Ripper is still out there today. Number 3. The Yorkshire Ripper Peter Sutcliffe is a notorious and well-known killer in England, especially Yorkshire. He was dubbed the Yorkshire Ripper. I have actually met the son of his first victim, named Richard McCann, and I have read both of his books, which I would recommend. The Yorkshire Ripper was known to have assaulted at least four young women, one by hitting her over the head with a stone inside a sock in 1969, and three with a hammer and knife in 1975, before he turned to murder. The first victim of Peter Sutcliffe was Wilma McCann. She was from Leeds, and he killed her on the 30th of October. She was a mother of four, and Sutcliffe hit her twice over the head with a hammer before stabbing her body 15 times in the neck, chest and stomach, all while her four children slept inside the family home, 150 yards away. His following murders and attempted attacks followed some similar patterns. Most had been hit in the head with a ball peel hammer and stabbed to death with either a screwdriver or a knife. Sutcliffe's next victim was named Emily Jackson, and he stabbed her body 50 times. He picked her up while she was working the streets of Leeds, and then he dragged her into a nearby parking lot, and attacked her with a screwdriver, and he stomped on her so hard that he left a boot print on her leg. One of his victims did in fact survive, and she managed to give a detailed description to the police. Sutcliffe initially attacked women in residential areas, but then moved to red light districts, as he liked the vulnerability of prostitutes. He carried out his murders over the next five years, which included some women who weren't prostitutes too. More than 150 police officers worked on the Yorkshire Ripper investigation, 
but they weren't able to catch Peter Sutcliffe for years. One of the reasons is because they received hoax calls and hoax letters from somebody falsely claiming to be the killer. The police finally arrested Sutcliffe in 1981, years into his murderous killing spree. He was driving through Sheffield in Yorkshire with a prostitute in the car with him. When the police pulled him over, as he had fake license plates. The police assumed that the car might have been stolen, so they checked it out. They had no idea that they had just pulled over the Yorkshire Ripper. He told the police that he was bursting for a pee. He was allowed to step away from the officers. They brought him in for questioning about the license plates, and it was then when they realised that he matched the description of the Yorkshire Ripper, and they began questioning him about the case. The next day, the police returned to the spot where the car had been pulled over, and there, they found a knife, hammer, and a rope. And back at the police station, they found a knife that was hidden inside the toilet tank of the restroom that he had used. Frustratingly, they had actually interviewed Peter Sutcliffe nine times in connection with being the Yorkshire Ripper, due to the fact that he matched the description of one of his survivors and his vehicles were often spotted in the areas where the murders had occurred. The police had frequently dragged Sutcliffe in for questioning, but each time, his wife was able to give him an alibi. But this time, after two days of interrogation, Peter Sutcliffe confessed that he was in fact the Yorkshire Ripper, and he then described the crimes he had committed in detail. Sutcliffe soon stood on trial, for 13 counts of murder, although some believe it could have been as high as 25. He pleaded not guilty on the grounds of diminished responsibility, claiming a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia, and that he was just a tool of God's will, claiming to hear voices that ordered him to kill. The Yorkshire Ripper remains behind bars to this day, and he has faced multiple attacks from inmates leaving him blind in one eye. He applied for release recently, but thankfully, the court ruled that he will never be released. Number 4. The Rostov Ripper Now, this next killer on the list, named Andre Chikatilo, is in my opinion, one of the most sadistic killers of all time. He is a very well-known killer, and usually ranks among the most famous. Between 1978 and 1990, he was responsible for killing 21 boys, 14 girls, and 17 women. It became known that he tortured his victims while they were alive, and he did it in incredibly personal and disgusting ways. He would often rip out people's tongues by biting them off, and would tear away their sexual organs and he would also cut their bellies open. I can't even imagine the pain they must have experienced. From a young age, he attempted several relationships, all of which ended when he was unable to perform sexually, and the Rostov Ripper's first sexual encounter actually involved him attacking a teenage girl. But the encounter ended with his inability to perform, which he was later ridiculed for. On top of his small stature and his impotence, it made him a victim to bullies. Fearing that girls would talk about him behind his back, he attempted suicide. Later in life, he managed to become a teacher, but when he couldn't discipline his students, he retaliated by sexually assaulting two of them. And the shocking thing is, he wasn't even punished for either of the assaults and he was still allowed to perform his duties at the school. And what's most disturbing is that one of the jobs he was given was to patrol the girls' dormitories. People soon found out, and he was later fired due from pressure of the complaints. And this seemed to spark something in him, and he wanted to take revenge. All of the Ripper's victims were children or runaways that nobody would miss or that they would take time for people to report. He would begin by picking them up at bus stops or train stations. And then, 
he would stab and gag them to silence them. And he would then mutilate their bodies with his teeth and then attempt to have sexual intercourse with them before covering the bodies with leaves and dirt in an attempt to hide evidence. And the Rostov Ripper had a special hallmark which he would do to all of his victims. He would burst their eardrums and he would remove the victim's eyes entirely by stabbing them and slicing them. He did this because of the myth that the murdered keep the imprint of the killer's face on their eyes. He became a suspect and he was arrested and released multiple times in four years. But unfortunately, there were many loopholes and his blood type did not match the other bodily fluids which had allowed him to walk free during these times. This was until a psychiatrist spoke to him during the investigation claiming that he wanted to understand the mind of a killer. The Rostov Ripper was pleased that somebody had finally taken interest in what he had done and he confessed to everything. When he faced trial, he was put into an iron cage to separate him from the jury and to keep the people safe. But while he was inside, he would randomly sing, ramble incoherent nonsense and he even dropped his trousers multiple times. He was sentenced to death and shot in the back of the head on Valentine's Day 1994 and was responsible for 55 deaths. Number 5 I saved what I found to be the most terrifying until last. This Ripper genuinely gave me the creeps. This is the Granny Ripper. Tamara Samsonova is a Russian granny with a hobby of killing and possibly eating people. Although her neighbours remember her as a loving, kind and caring woman who sometimes acted a little strange, they could never expect what she was capable of. In the year 2000, her husband disappeared without a trace and was never seen again. Some people suspect that Tamara killed her own husband but there is no conclusive evidence. But again, I wouldn't put it past her. After her husband's disappearance, Tamara started renting a room in her house, and it's possible from this moment that she found the perfect way to kill by going unnoticed. In August of 2015, the mutilated body of a woman was found in St. Petersburg. The woman was wrapped inside a shower curtain the body turned out to be somebody named Valentina Yulanova, who was a 79-year-old woman and a neighbour of Tamara. CCTV cameras of the building where the woman lived showed images of Tamara going in and out several times during one night, carrying strange plastic bags. So they decided to search Tamara's apartment, and that's when they found a hacksaw that was covered in blood a torn shower curtain, and her diary, in which she described 11 murders in three different languages, Russian, English, and German. Along with the diaries, there were also books on black magic, and books on the Ripper I mentioned previously, the Rostov Ripper. Tamara later confessed to the investigators that she had in fact killed Valentina because they got into an argument about washing some cups. Tamara was living with a neighbour as her house needed some work doing. But when the work was completed, Tamara refused to leave. So because of this argument over the cups, Tamara got hold of some sleeping pills and she put 50 of them into her friend's food. Tamara then went off into bed to sleep and she awoke in the middle of the night to find her friend's body in the kitchen. Tamara then began to mutilate her body, starting by cutting off her head and her hands. She then placed them into a saucepan and boiled them. She then cut off the other limbs and gradually disposed of them. This is what she can be seen doing on the CCTV footage. 
you can also see her carrying the saucepan. She also showed investigators how she did it on a practice dummy, which I find terrifying. According to her diaries, she killed 11 people, and there are people who also think that she did in fact kill her husband. She is suspected of butchering several lodges that could have stayed in her house after her husband's disappearance. Strangely, her mother-in-law also vanished suddenly, without a trace. And while they searched her flat, they found some business cards that belonged to a man who was found dead not far from her home. She is currently under investigation for 14 murders over the span of 20 years, and in my opinion, is one of the creepiest killers ever. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Unfortunately, my videos are being instantly demonetized. So if you want to help out the channel, please leave a like and a comment or share it with your friends. I also have a Patreon if you wish to support me any further. In the future, I will be narrating creepypastas exclusively on Patreon.